and welcome to Retro Roulette. Got any of them taquitos? I'm your host, Michael Riley. With me is Jason Amherst. I like some taquitos. And Ashley Miller. Sour, the sour cream and jalapeno and the chicken buffalo. And uh, it, this is a rare Daneless episode. <laughs> Or Daneless show, or a Daneless session, because he wasn't uh, available to. Got a weird tuxedos. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and playing. hopefully he can keep his mouth and his mind off my pudding tits. I don't. What? Excuse me. What? You wanna run that by me again? Nightmare creatures. Oh, he keeps calling me a pudding titty or a pudding head or. Apparently, the man wants pudding, so get him pudding. Ooh, what's this? I think it just said <laughs> that the logo was there. You could read it. Ah, uh, yes. I think this has been uh, remade. Possibly. All I know is that I believe the PS1 version is better. I don't remember this game, though, I don't think. It looks promising. It kind of looks like a knockoff. Castlevania. Um, I prefer playing Nadia when I play this game. I've played this game a bunch. I used to own this game back in the day. Callisto Entertainment, known for Nightmare Creatures and Fury of the Furries. Here's one now. Um, puzzle platform game. Later relicensed by Namco as Pack in Time. Uh, let's see here. I, I seem I seem um, to remember pack in time. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that then, bad. Uh, other other games they made they made a game based off the Fifth Element. Uh, they made two Nightmare Creatures games. A third one was canceled. Um, the second one was published by Konami. Um, they made a lot of other garbage. Four Wheel Thunder, New York Race. Their last game to be released was called Castleween. This just feels like a Castlevania knockoff. Kind of. But... Uh, except it's uh, except it's supposed to be survival horror. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's just. Oh it, God! It gives a Castlevania vibe, but it also gives like. I don't, it's like a mix of Castlevania meets uh, Legacy of Kane because of, you know, in some aspects you're using like a sword. That's weird. I've never played this one before, I don't think. Yeah, I definitely have. I used to play this uh, for realsies back on. Oh. Uh, uh, that, I died. You died. Yes, I do I probably should have used my gun on that instead of just hitting it like a doofus. Ooh, cut him in half. Apparently there's an adrenaline bar that causes health to be lost if it runs out. Yeah, you gotta constantly be like killing things. Or just <laughs> yeah. Or you just die. They even tried to make a film, but it never came out. Oh, my God. A Nightmare Creatures film? Supposedly, uh, the rights uh, to it were gotten, and a film adaptation was announced in December 2000, but never went into production. Well, I don't know if it would have been any good. <laughs> if it would have been as bad as the Blood Rain movie... I'm sure I, I I got two words as to why the Blood Rain movie was bad. Uva Bowl. I was so disappointed too because I fucking love Blood Rain and Uve Bowl had I was to say, put his. If Uve Bowl's directing it, don't expect it to be any good. His best film was Postal, and even that one's still shit. Yes. I had never seen Postal, but I had seen clips, and I know Dave Foley is taking shit in that movie. So I guess uh, it says here, Artists Production Group, AMG Group, and Le Studio Canal had acquired the rights to uh, Nightmare Creatures. Studio French uh, Studio. Was, <laughs> yep. 
Uh, movie adaptation was set to be directed by Ralph Zondag, who did Dinosaur, uh, and written by Matt Cerulnik, uh, whom the Callisto Press release states as having recently completed three major projects for Dimension Films, Paid in Full, Total Recall 2, and Hellhole. Oh, shit, you're in bad shape, my guy. Yep, I know. So, There's like, a whole lot I can do you... about it at the moment. Apparently, uh, Ralph Zondag also did the movie Raised by Ghosts for MGM. I, I can't believe that this was popular enough, or at least sold well enough, for... Uh, France to be like, oh, let's give you a movie. Oh. You're only doing this to get back at America for I, calling us pussy. I honestly we think it them. probably was solely on the back of the PS1 version because the PS1 version is the better version. Yeah. Apparently there's a PC version too. I'd never played the PC version. I've played the N64 and the PS1 version, and I can tell you by far the PS1 one is better. Mainly yeah. just because PS1, you can have dual stick controls, which is always nice. Apparently, uh, the commercial featured voiceover by Maurice LaMarche. Mm -hmm. Tonight, we're going to take over the nightmare creatures, Pinky. <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, no, this is only got like, overall, according to game rankings... 65% on N64, 78% on PlayStation. Yep. And a 51 on PC. Oof, that's no good. It did not get reviewed well on PC. 64. That means it was just five numbers away from my favorite number. What is fi what is fifty nine? Fifty nine. Yeah, I was to say. <laughs> Jason, Jason, and I were racing to that joke. <laughs> so math appeared before my head. Yeah, like that woman in uh, what was the it? numbers don't lie. This game sucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of seems like you're fucking stuck. Yeah, I, says, I don't know where I'm supposed to go from here. I can't open the gate. I don't know. I don't. I haven't seen any switches. Can you kick the gate? Like, it says do a triple kick. No, it did not say do a triple. Oh, there's a switch. Hold on. I didn't even see that because it blended in with the wall. Get up on the thing. Go wow, around. Wow, this... The, the Look at all these shitty colors. Would be nice if I could. You, Can you... literally have terrible apparently control. Oh, there we go. I did hit it. Apparently. Came out in 2003? I did hit it, apparently. That's a huge bitch. Yeah, what about the thing I'm fighting, though? Heh. <laughs> <laughs> It's self-deprecation for man. Yeah, I'm not the way the the. I'm not a fan of the way the camera keeps wanting to. How do I? Okay, it's B. Oh no, the camera's absolute dog shit. Dog water. Oh, I got to explain uh, the difference uh, between the drizzling shit and uh, that's the shit uh, to some coworkers yesterday. I was, I was having a rather rambunctious day. I guess. Oh no! Like I was, I was like the past couple of days. I had been feeling cantankerous as fuck. Uh, and speaking of drizzling shits, this game is kind of giving me that vibe. Yeah, a little Maybe. bit. Which is a shame because like it it's painted like... with shit. Yeah, it's well, very, it's it like... is very brown. 
I was disappointed. Like, I'll I'll save my I'll save my thoughts for the end because clearly, there maybe maybe it'll come through at the last minute and be like, oh my god, I can't see that. It's such a big. I have stun locked him. I have stun locked him. It's it's yeah. okay. It's fine. Oh, solid gold ass weapons all around. Okay, he probably died like five seconds ago. <laughs> I, I was just beating, <laughs> beating up his corpse at that point. It's like, oh, oh my god, oh my god, he's fucking dead. Oh, he's dead. I say you, he dead. The colonel. He's... Stop fucking hitting, you... He's like... Bleh, bleh. Do I have... <gasps> okay... Oh, that's not health. I thought that was health. Okay, that is health. Alright, god. The orb is health. Smoke bomb! Yeah. I can say it. The other thing was a flechette, apparently. Like, How very hexen of you, pocket game. Miss. Like, throw it down. Pocket mist. It's like, ah, oh, goddammit. I can't say. I don't know where the eyes are on that thing anyway, so. Ouch. Well. At least it's not like a a shunting thing where it's like, oh, there's a face. These enemies respawning. Videos. Uh, the zombies might just be getting back up if I don't cut them in half, which is you know what a zombie do. I'll take that. Well, I'll mostly and immediately use it. Well, mostly a zombie, you have to somehow destroy the brain. Sometimes Zombie. decapitation. I mean, if I work. if I cut them in half, that usually will do it. I think that's a full health orb. Oh Jesus! Dear All right. God, there's two of them. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus, there was five of them. <laughs> that one's probably dead at this point. I would say. Yeah, I was to say. When they have delayed, <laughs> when they have delayed death noises, and you can just beat up their corpse infin infinitely. <laughs> Where's the other dude that was in this uh, area? Corpse Areas. juggling. It's like get your freaky. It's like you're not Goro. Goro is better. Uh, yeah, that is a full health orb. That's what I thought. Yeah, we we have Goro at home. Yeah, that that zombie I, got back up. Mama, Mama, I would like Goro. Oh, Popino, we have a Goro at home. I think I'm gonna have to silence my phone. My phone is going off a bunch. <laughs> I don't think it's the backseat mm. gamer chat. I think it's XCW chat because it's show day. No. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's not happening on my phone. Clearly. Well, that's. That, that means it's un undoubtedly the XCW chat. Yeah, I'm going to put that on vibrate. Put your vibrator on cell phone mode. Now you remind me. This is how you remind me to put this vibrator on cell phone mode. Although that would be kind of convenient in a funny little prank to pull on the mister. On the mister? On Mr. Mister? Well, you know Well, you know how like men will say, hmm, I want to give something to the missus. Mr. Sister. Oh, oh that that is actually a really good song by a uh, Kate Gibson. Is it love? Have you ever heard is of it the love Kate? you're after? Hey, Mr. Sister, you raid her closet for fishnets. 
uh, better than Mr. Fister. Oh, that yes. Bye, Lee. So, Mr. Fister, uh, the uh, the uh, cousin to Senior Clean. Gets it done sometimes with his penis. Yep. Too bad you can't do, like, a killing blow on, like, downed enemies just to make sure that they stay down. It's funny when we, uh... It's funny when we did the... When we did our Doom 3 record yesterday. Uh... It came up like, where where's Jace, I wonder? And I was like, well, he had to uh, make a Brenna Floss song and then record a Total Biscuit video. Uh, <laughs> and then I he's also, also, I also he's, a, he's also Brenna, he's Brenna Floss, he's Total Biscuit, wig. he's Mr. Clean. <laughs> I, I had to uh, put on a wig uh, and uh, record an episode of Liquid Ladder. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Charlie here. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, let's do another liquid ladder. <laughs> uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do a little tier list here for uh, fast food fries. All right, thoughts on nightmare creatures, Jason? Ugh, God, like you know, they they definitely fixed it for PlayStation, but. Even then, I don't think this is much of a good game. Ashley. I'm disappointed. Uh, that's an understatement. I love this game when I was growing up, but like it has not aged very well at all. Yeah, it, it's, it's just not good. Scores out of 10, Jason. Two. Ashley. Two. And one. Wow, when the first Everything, first everything in the game looked like up. poop. All right, let's uh, spin this bad boy again and see what we get. Big bucks, big bucks, no whammies, no whammies. Show me potato salad. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The, the the wheel came very close to landing on Ashley's choice. That being said, Dang. the game it landed on would have been Ashley's choice. <laughs> uh. Well, I think we already know what the best game of this episode is going to be. Yes. Yep. Yes. So that means that this will this is off my reserves for when it's my choice, uh, which is perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Oh my god. Oh. oh my god. Warp whistle. Yep. Oh. I could literally taste my childhood right now. I uh I recently completed my Zelda amiibo collection. Oh. Nice. That's yeah, hot. I, I got the one amiibo that I was missing, which was uh, Smash Brothers Youngling. Oh, man, if I had that, I would have sent it to you. I can't. I can't. Well, uh, they they re-released it recently. Like, Nintendo's been reprinting a bunch of amiibo. Nice. Long of us are just a guardian spirit. We're not going to get very far into this at all, but. Uh, not not from... without some shenanigans, which, I'm, I mean, like, I, those I, are kind of hard to pull off. Uh, I've got, I do have accoutrements on, obviously. Because, um, like I said, yeah. I, we're not, we're not, we're not going to get very far into it, but. Yeah, if we were playing this legit and actually doing a full playthrough, I would definitely have them off. For the most part, yeah, because like you're 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 not gonna need accoutrements. You you can get through the game. Like Master Quest version of this would be a little would be like a different story because you know, like we're gonna fuck you up on the water temple, and it's like there's a key. Where are the keys? God damn it! Why aren't there no keys? Uh, fun. I mean, if you fun... follow a walkthrough, it's not that bad. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, plus, you know, I played this game a bunch so i really 
I don't really need a walkthrough. I, I kind of know where I need to go. Thankfully, hey, that's that's hey, what Roger happens. Fox. Yeah, that's what happens when a game is twenty seven years old. Um. <laughs> this game is old enough to host a late night variety comedy show. Are you referring to Taylor Tomlinson, the host of After Midnight? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'd do her. Oh, I know you would. Dost thou sense it, Mr. Krabs? Plus, she's bisexual, so, you know, she'll hit it from both sides. Okay, then. That doesn't... That information does nothing for me, so... <laughs> doesn't affect me in the uh, slightest. It doesn't affect you negatively, so... Doesn't affect me at all. <laughs> Well, I mean, what if you decide to... That is very to, neutral you know... information. Well, I mean, you could double-team someone. If, that that if, is true. Uh, yeah. Like, if, if that opportunity every, was every open, man, Every man's good. dream, two women at once. Me, Taylor Tomlinson, and Caroline Ray. <laughs> You, 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 just the if you would have if Betty White would have still been alive, you would have had the triple crown right Me, there and then. Elvira. <laughs> Good luck with Elvira. She's a full blown lesbian, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's fair. Like she, but had she a, is a, a she is she is still quite attractive though. Even oh no! 70s. Like she's absolutely absolutely stunning. So. Uh... And, I, lo I love the fact that uh, to, to kind of like uh, sidetrack now to uh, the topic of games. It's uh, Assylvania, Symphony of the Butt. Yeah, I saw oh, that. You saw that too? I saw that oh, too. Yeah. I freaking love that. <laughs> Die, You don't belong in this room. <laughs> you mad. What is a mad? A miserable little pair of balls. <laughs> but enough talk. Bring me nachos, ass white. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I freaking, I freaking love that. Like this guy is a beautiful artist. I want He's Mike Judge to, I want that. Mike Judge to animate that now. Yeah. That should be a future episode of Beavis and Butthead. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> But enough talk. <laughs> but enough talk, bunghole. Bring me nachos, <laughs> asswipe. I could kind of do the butt head. I could kind of do the butt head because I could curl uh, my top lip enough. I used to be able to do both of them pretty accurately. Uh, uh, uh. Shut up, bung. Shut up, bunghole. <laughs> no. I like more of the night or something. <laughs> Shut up. Are you threatening me, bunghole? Are you threatening me? I just spit all over my mic. <laughs> there has been there has been a Beavis and Butthead uprising because of SNL, and the fact that that guy made that comic strip and had it in like the style of Castlevania Symphony of the Night just makes it so much more delectable. Oh God, it's it's beautiful. It is. It's so good, man. Must the random Hank Hill for no reason? <laughs> Where in Tarnation am I? <laughs> they they should have had the other guy that was in the show that was kind of like the predecessor. The, the proto Hank. Hank. Yeah. Yeah. I can never remember the guy's name, but he was the neighbor. Yeah. That boy ain't right. He's been a whipping in my tool shed. Whacking. Oh, uh, like uh, when when they got the well, uh... yeah, he's whacking, but in Castlevania, he's whipping. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. My sister took some rupees and went shopping. And blah, 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 blah. You can get rupees, bitch. Thanks. So, uh, oh my god! Of course, uh, if this was. Uh... <laughs> uh, wrestling uh, related Castlevania would be uh, Simpy of the Night. No Simpy. <laughs> it's like die, genetic uh, freak. You don't belong uh, in this world. <laughs> like, 
You know... What is a genetic freak? You look at me and I'm it's a genetic a shop freak. Music. <laughs> oh, it's oh, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I'm loving this so much. Now you just need to find the sword. Yeah. I already have I think nuts the last and time I played through it was uh, the 3DS version, actually. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's, you know, the fact that they put this on like shops, like e shops and stuff back in its time, it just goes to show that this game can transcend time. And I mean, great. it's it's an evergreen title, you know. I mean, that's that's what most Nintendo games do. Although I will say that, uh, you know, certain newer games like the 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 Zelda Wild duology are kind of exhausting because they're just really big open world games. I have yet to play the the Wild games, but it's like I kind of got on the hype train. Because it looks cool, and I think the only thing that I would have issues with is just having to find weapons. Because of weapons breaking, it's like, hmm, Master Sword never broke. Poor dude, yeah, it's gonna see, have I mean, like, broke. I, I guess that's why I'm lucky I've, I'm such a, uh, you know, uh, what's, what's the phrase? Consumer whore? And how? Yeah, because I've got all those amiibo. Uh, it's like, oh shit, I'm out of weapons. Well, I solved that problem. <laughs> Scan all the amiibo. So it's like, uh, oh, that's uh, sick. Oh. Tears of the Kingdom, I, I didn't even bother patching the game. Like, I, I straight up, I left the game unpatched up until the very end so I could just clone items whenever I needed to. Let him through, you dump truck whore. You at least need a sword and shield. Sheesh. Yeah. Uh, last I checked, I think the sword was in... Um, it was that little like side another... path that's got like the rolling boulders. Yeah. So we just gotta... We just gotta find that and then you're one step closer to... Yeah, it was you up know. there. The edge, and I'm about to break. Yeah. Now, I will admit, I enjoy Majora's Mask, but if you put both of those games in front of me, I'll play this one first. Ocarina any day. So, uh, yes. I hated the three-day mechanic in uh, Majora. So many people are like, it's the better game. I'm like, yeah, if you can deal with that three day time limit, like, you know, but for someone like me, I never friggin' bothered. Like, you know, it, it, it annoyed the fuck out of me. Well, it, it was annoying at the start. It was most definitely annoying. But as you got better and you got your items restarting on the first day, wasn't as trivial. The only thing that was a pain in the ass was that the mask from the bosses never saved. That was the only thing that was a pain in the ass. But everything else, all your weapons, your equipment, and the, the other mask, which, you know, can contribute to the fierce deity mask, wasn't as big of a problem for me. I know it's a, a, an annoyance for some, not for me. Now, now we're going to show that little bitch who's the bitch now that I got a sword and a shield. I got magic jar. I got a jar of potion. I got a jar of potion. Wow. 
Apparently, uh, the creator of Lazy Town just bought back the rights to the series. Oh, shit. And thinks that the show has potential and has plans to revive it. Uh, how do you bring the show back without Robbie Rotten? Can't. Unless they find a new Robbie Rotten. And the only other person that I can think of or imagine playing Robbie Rotten is maybe Bill Hader. Which wouldn't be bad. Hey, he's got a sword, he's got a shield, he's got a fairy. Move, bitch. Thanks, DMX. I got a stick. I got a Deku stick. I got a Deku stick. Oh, this is great. Like this, 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 this is the thing. Yes, I remember. Those variants give you the stick, but the ones that look like they're gonna snap at you and bite you those those are the ones that give you the nuts remember when so we played the, saying... remember when we played this on MVG live and I gave the Deku tree a Jamaican accent <laughs> <laughs> so now it's uh, just got Wilford Treely or Brown well, now we now yeah. returned <laughs> amiibo welcome Listen carefully to what I, the great diabetes, am about to tell thee. Thy <laughs> slumber these past moons must have been relentless and full of nightmares. As servants of evil gain strength, a vile climate pervades the land and causes nightmares to those sensitive to diabetes. Verily, thou hast felt it, a prick in your finger. Amiibo, as time has come to test thy courage. I have been cursed. <laughs> I need you to break the curse. Feed me a Milky Way bar, please. Thus thou have courage enough to take this task. Then enter oh, Brave Amiibo. And bubble. now to Nobby. Ah! <laughs> ah! Oh my god. So apparently Deku uh, is a Japanese term originally referencing a wooden doll. Suggesting something is useless or powerless. Like the Deku tree. So, I mean, like, useless stick. Well, I got I a mean, problem, it's making me sick. Sometimes I got a useless stick. Ooh, the nut. You got a nut. A, u a, a useless nut. Useless nut. Or is it? I got a problem. It's making me slut. I've got a useless nut. I don't give a hell. I don't give a shit. That's why I'm just tugging on nips. <laughs> I'm so confused right now. It's one of them uh, obscure final AI songs. You know, the kind you hate. Uh, I don't want to like them. The thing is, I don't want to like them, but if they're going to use AI to make stupid shit and not make murder machines, I'm okay with that. Yeah, but it just bothers me that, you know, that sort of creative shit can be done by a person and done better. And you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Like, it literally... It, wow. Oh, oh, it must be a compass or a map. Um, it's the moon. I'm the map. I'm the map. I don't have a slingshot, so I can't hit that yet. I'm sure that I get the slingshot. Because when I first heard it... Engine. When I seriously first heard that, I'm just like... 
oh wow there's like lucille bogdan artist from like way way back in the day was more than just her it's like oh no it's just fucking ai singing dirty doo-wop Gotcha. It's like, please, please spare me, sir. I'll tell you some useless shit. The tuck and roll will not save your ass if no. you jump from too high of yeah. a freaking. If you jump uh, from the Empire State wedge. Building, yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be. Uh, that's unfortunately as far as we're getting. Uh, thoughts on Ocarina of Time, Jason? It's a classic. You know, I mean, it took Zelda into the third dimension, and uh, it you know, kind of sort of uh, created a template for other uh, adventure games uh, in the future going forward. Ashley? This is a piece of my childhood and my teen years, and... It kind of made the N64 the more dominant uh, gaming system in the house because I played it, my brother played it, my mom played it, my mom's a big Zelda fan, and I wish we had more time because there's more of this beautiful game that needs to be explored. Uh, yeah, this game is such a miserable pile of shit. The controls are terrible. Uh, the item selection is weird. Uh, the dungeons are really mazy and confusing. And I'm also a terrible liar. This game is great. Scores out of 10, Jason. And Ashley. 10. Absolutely 10. No doubt about it. If you thought I we were giving almost... it any other score but 10, you're out of your fucking mind. I almost... I almost thought like i was almost gonna curse you the fuck out <laughs> i'm so glad that it was sarcasm because i could have been like is this what what about that looks familiar a pack should not be inserted or ah, removed yes. during gameplay this could be fun Extreme G's, both of the Extreme G games were fun. Oh, it's Midway too. So that, 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 that. Promising. Yeah, Midway is uh is a lot more promising than if it were say like uh, Ocean. <laughs> yeah, this this was before Wipeout became a uh, PlayStation exclusive because uh, Sony bought out uh, Cygnosis. Which is a real shame, because, like, honestly, when when that studio went under and, and Sony shut them down, like, my first thought was, like, Nintendo, hire these guys to make freaking F-Zero. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, so I was not expecting uh, this type of racing game. I was expecting water and... This does, it does give off F-Zero vibes, for real. Yeah, ba basically, uh, ba basically, before F-Zero 64 came out, uh, or, or rather F-Zero X, uh, you know, you had Extreme G and you had this. And this beat the shit out of Extreme G too, at least. The first Extreme G was good. The second one... Second one was okay. We played well, it recently. Yeah, it was okay, but it definitely, I don't know, there was something about it that wasn't as good as the first one. I think it's just because the the first one existed before Wipeout and uh, uh, F-Zero on the console, and that's why it was good. Extended. Nice. Shot that dude. Like, excuse me, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna scooch on by. Yeah. Pew. 
Yeah, this is a this is if Extreme G and F Zero had a love child. Yep. For sure. If I'm not mistaken. I think that uh, this game had the uh, the weird N64 controller uh, uh, racing vehicle too that was unlockable. That was, that, was game? that was Arrow Gauge, and we played that. Okay. We are lock. I should point out, I'm not pressing the button anymore. It's just shooting all those out. Ooh, shocking. I think that's like energy restore, but I have full energy on my shield, so... That's the F-Zero oh. F part of this game, that's for sure. So it's like a yeah. is it is it just me or, or is the track like shifting every once in a while? It might just be me. It I don't know why, but sometimes I feel like the the track elevates and then it flattens. If that is the case, that's actually pretty pretty unique to this game. Uh oh. Oh, well, thank God. I blew the guy out of the out of the way. It's fine. And by, no, bl like, by blowing, and by blowing caused... that guy out of the way, I mean with my missiles, not with my mouth. Excuse me. Just hit me in the back, back end with that. I don't know why. It, it could just be me, but it doesn't feel like it's as fast as an Extreme G or an F-Zero X. It, it does it, kind of feel... It feels feel like it's the, uh, the frame rate. The frame rate seems a little that. It, well, I mean, yeah. it's run. It's t according to my program, it's running at sixty frames a second. Although, it's clearly oh. not. But, <laughs> it's, but it's running at full speed. So the game. I think the game's only thirty frames a second. But best in the world. Ah, uh, let's go to the next challenge. Why not? Please wait. I don't understand why they make cartridges with load times. That makes no sense to me. Yeah, we yeah, said that yeah. the last roulette, too. Yeah, because of um, what fucking game was we playing? That had Fatal the, Fury. Fatal Fury had load times for some reason. Yeah. Well, this hasn't been a disappointing episode. Yeah, not thus far. Nightmare Creatures was kind of meh. But damn, did Ocarina of Time ever balance that shit out. Yeah. 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 I'm just glad we haven't had to use the veto so far. We've only got one, so... Yeah. Might as well, might as well bank the fuck out of him, and then when Dane comes back, he's like, Oh, I'm, I'm so proud of you, children. Yeah. <laughs> Come back and we have somehow have like six vetoes I am going to put a I am going to put a cap on it of uh, however many games we play in a session that's how many vetoes you can have <laughs> that's fair excuse me I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead on by you we yeah it doesn't seem as fast as extreme G or F0 but it's definitely a smooth controlling experience. Like, I'm not having very many issues at all with the controlling of it. I don't have any weapons. I can't hit you. Oh, bitch. Yeah. yeah. Third game in the Wipeout series. Only one published on Nintendo, obviously. Um, at the time of the game's release, Psygnosis had been owned for five years by Sony. Hence why this was released by Midway. Oh. Set in 2098, a year after Wipeout 2097, yep. uh, several new elements were added to Wipeout, including analog control, which benefited from the N64 controller, new weapons, teams, and tracks. Uh, F-Zero X came out a month before this, apparently. Yeah, that could be an issue. They just absolutely crushed this does, game. And it does say here, criticized for its slow frame rate. Aha. Uh -huh. So, yeah, this, even though it's running at full speed, it is not running at full speed. Yeah. 
It's not running at the speed it should be running. I mean, if we, you look at uh, Extreme G2, which we literally played like a couple episodes ago, and how fast-paced of a game that was, or even F-Zero X, which we also played a few episodes ago, and how fast that was comparatively, yeah, this doesn't hold a candle. At the same time, I would fail to call it bad, because it's not, really. It's, it's, it's... it's, it's fine. It's not, like, the best racing game. There are way better racing games on the N64, but it's not a bad one. I think it's the anti-gravity. It just makes it feel so weird because it feels like you're floating. Which is weird because the, the controls are definitely not floaty. It controls like a, a friggin' motorbike would control, which... <gasps> it controls the way it's meant to control, basically. Yeah. Looking for Carl. Apparently, uh, the uh, frame rate would be a lot worse in multiplayer, so... I finished first. Nice. Mm. It's a new lap record. It's important to let your partner finish first. It's a new rap record. Oh. Uh, go on, go on. Put him on the glass. Wait. <laughs> The failed Sir Mix a Lot follow up to Baby Got Back. Put him on the glass. He's like, oh, rapping about booty works. Let's rap about titties. It didn't work. I mean, anyone can make anyone can make a joke about being a titty man, but you know, it Sir Mix a Lot is 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 the ass aficionado. Yeah, that's why a titty song didn't really work by him. But not only, not only later, that, but you wouldn't would, have been able to play would. the you wouldn't even be able to play the music video on any channel in the United States because it would have had to been censored the the shit out of it. Like the only titty song that does work is like the um, S titties S and titties. I uh, disagree. What about milkshake? I that, thought milkshake was talking about. No, she's very clearly singing about her titties. What what else would oh. a milkshake be? <laughs> Look. Oh, the, the, I. Whoa, what the? That fuck? was. A, it's a power up. I have a power up that makes me do that. That's you saw it awesome. Too? Yeah. Okay. No, we're, okay, you're not good. just having LSD induced hallucinations. <laughs> the track did actually Look. do that. <laughs> I wanted to make sure because it's happened before, and I'm like. What the fuck is the the thing elevating? I don't know. Nope. This this track seems way faster to me. That could just be me, but the, this this seems way faster now to me than the than the last one. It ones. looks like it's gone faster if you look at the the uh, stripes. Like yeah, holy shit. Yeah, this feels like it's fast. This like, is yeah. where it starts actually feeling like it's extreme G. Although Wheeler Walker Jr. does sing a song about titties, yeah, but he uh, also sings—he's also basically a comedy act. I, I mean, mean when, that you, is when, true. when one of your songs is called "Fuck You, Bitch," you know. Well, yes, talks about jerking a... off to pictures on the cell phone. Well, it's more than just that. The song of uh, "Country Boy," that. That's the only I, country artist that I can listen I'm to. I'm pretty sure that's John Denver. Thank God I'm a no. country boy. No, he's like, <laughs> have you ever been fucked, fucked, fucked by a country boy rammed, rammed, rammed by a redneck spread, spread, spread by an inbred who's kind of got your daddy's voice? Have you ever been licked by a hick with a hill? Billy Dick got a rash on, or a snatch on your... What? what is it? <laughs> you got, got a rash on your snatch. snatch. <laughs> <laughs> got I a am snatch. so well, confused got right now. Got a snatch on your rash. It's perfect. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen the video in a while, but uh, yeah, Wheeler Walker Jr. He is kind of like a comedic musician who does exclusively country songs. 
He has a cowboy hat, aviators, black button-down shirt, jeans, cowboy boots. He does a full band. Like, there's guitarists. He plays an acoustic guitar. Drummer. He's funny. Inappropriate, but funny. He would essentially be Billy Ray Cyrus if he had pulled out. <laughs> and a lot of people feel like Billy Ray Cyrus should have pulled out. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, could be worse. I don't know, though. Honestly, that other, uh... honestly, She's everybody, a... listen, everybody who hates on Miley Cyrus, in a moment of sincerity... If you hate on Miley Cyrus for the shit that she wears, clearly you weren't around for Billy Ray Cyrus' heyday when he basically oh, wore yeah. the exact same shit. Like, he would walk around with sleeveless shirts, vests with nothing on underneath. Is it really any surprise that Miley Cyrus is the way she is? I mean, in 1992, I mean, Billy Ray Cyrus was the one of the biggest country stars of all time. Him and Garth it, Brooks. It could be a lot worse. Just yeah. look at that it, other teeny bopper icon that's suddenly gone edgy. Jojo Siwa. Oh yeah, it's karma, bitch. Nobody's ever Yay. done this. nobody's ever done this before. Miley Cyrus is like, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, and I don't even think Miley's a lesbian. She just she just fucking does. I think Miley's pan. If she's anything, she's probably yeah. pansexual. That makes the most sense for her. I love everything. I'm going to put my Johnny on everything. <laughs> Shouldn't have put it on Robin Thick though. Eh. Ugh. Line's a little blurred on that one. Yeah. And his Beetlejuice britches. Bitch, please. That is ev definitely oh, a song. This is interesting. That is definitely a song where the Weird Al version is far superior. Oh, yeah, word crimes? Yeah. That was clever. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, you know what? I give Miley credit where credit's due. When you put her in a in an element where she is absolutely comfortable, she is absolutely phenomenal. Like, there was an episode of uh, Black Mirror, mm -hmm. and it was uh, about this pop star who gets these little robot uh, AI buddies made of her. And the AI starts taking on her real personality. And one of the things that makes it brilliant is that uh, Trent Reznor made a, like, made a parody song of uh, Head Like a Hole for her to sing. Yeah. And it's called I'm on a Roll. Which, pretty clever. Like, pretty clever song, and, and I, I actually like it. I ended up getting the uh, the MP3 of it, and the episode itself is actually really good. But I went through a Black Mirror phase, and, well, you know. You still use Amazon Some Music? <laughs> well, do you? Look, I... I don't have Apple. <laughs> CEO entrepreneur born in 1964, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Bezos. Jeffrey Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a and shame. It's a shame. It, it is a shame too because um, it's yeah. Amazon, but also Amazon Music is a far superior music service to. Like a lot of a lot of the music services, just because they offer like hi-fi streaming and HD music, and it's a shame. Although I, for my money, the best music service out there is probably Tidal. The only reason I don't have Tidal is because they don't support local files, whereas Spotify or YouTube Music does. So, per per personally, right now I'm using YouTube Music, but that's also because I paid for a year of YouTube Premium. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube you paid for music. YouTube Premium. Yeah, <laughs> I use uh, I use uh, Revanced. Yeah. Yep. YouTube. Uh, YouTube music. Uh, not bad. All the uh, uh, perks of YouTube Premium without having to pay. 
Spotify is not minus downloading bad. videos, but hey, and also minus having YouTube music. <laughs> nah, because uh, I've got a hacked version of uh, YouTube music, uh, revanced music as well. Well, okay then. Yeah. Slap my ass and call me Betsy. Okay, Betsy. In, in all in all fairness, I probably it's not on auto renew, so it ends at the end of December. So I'm probably just gonna switch back to Spotify or something else. Like I said, if Title supported fucking local files, I'd be on that. Spotify is not. Although bad, I I am I considering I am considering just going to Title anyway. <laughs> Title. What the fuck is Title? T I D A L. It's a music streaming service. Hmm. I'll have to check it out. I wanted to do app. Most... I wanted to use Apple Music, but my Apple ID is fucked up, and I can't get them. To... It's going to take them like a month to fix it, and I'm just like, because I don't have any Apple devices, so I'm just like, eh, whatever. So I can pay the same God, amount for a Title cool. account anyway. And Title is clearly the far superior musical service. They offer the same stuff that Apple does, or that Amazon Music does. Hi I will five, say the Dolby one thing Atmos. I, the one thing I do like about Apple Music was that it had um, it had the Portlandia music available, like not the not the stuff by like She Wants Revenge or anything. There were two songs made by Carrie and Fred that were exclusive to. Portlandia and they put them on vinyl it's like a clear vinyl record one mm -hmm. song is on one side one song is on the other they have an mp3 version and it's like okay I'm gonna purchase these thank you thank you it's, <laughs> it's dream of the 90s and then it's the the alt uh alt version of well no it's dream of the 90s and then it's Portland you're my home Anyway, thoughts on Wipeout 64, Jason? You know, it's not that bad. Uh, PlayStation versions seem to run a little bit better than the uh, N64, but uh, what do you expect from Midway? Ashley. Okay. I mean, it, it didn't suck. It was, like, I ended up watching, like, a good chunk of, like, the race and... It just, the bobbing back and forth just kind of made it feel <sighs> really weird to me. But all in all, it, it was good. Yeah, certain tracks just seem kind of really slow-ish, a little sluggish. The frame rate's not the best. But it's it's not bad, actually. Um, I wouldn't say it's a terrible game by any stretch. Scores out of 10, Jason. Uh, seven. Ashley. I'll give it a seven as well. I'm gonna give it a. Uh, I'll give it an eight. Why not? Just I'll be a little generous. Uh, on this edition of the show, we played uh, Nightmare Creatures, Ocarina of Time, and Wipeout sixty four. Do we need to even discuss what the best game of the episode was? I think we all know what it is. Uh, who, who is who is Princess Zorldo? <laughs> uh, that is correct. Select again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I thought it was Jeopardy for a second. Uh, anyway, thanks for joining us on this edition of Retro Roulette. If you like what we do, please hit subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. For Jason Amherst and Ashley Miller, I'm Mike Riley saying see you next time on Retro Roulette. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.